right, uh, work on the listings has begun. Uh, I've actually airbrushed all of these. Uh, this Vallejo Air light gray color or US Air, US Air Force, US something Air Force light gray, that kind of light gray that you see on jet planes and aircraft carriers. Uh, it's the lightest gray I could find, similar to Ulthuan gray. And um, it's pretty good. The only problem is it's so light gray that you can't really tell the difference between it and the white. Um, so it made it kind of an act of faith to airbrush these guys. Um, every time I did a new model, I compared it with the previous model just to show that, in fact, I had painted it gray instead of white. Um, but uh, it's definitely extremely subtle. I don't even know if you can see on the camera. Let me get something that's white. All right, I'll get you this sister that's white. And this dude. So it's a little bit more obvious now, but when you're actually spraying, it's really hard to see. Um, so anyway, so these guys are light gray. So the color scheme is gonna be cool, I think. So the um, clothing is gonna be this gray color. Um, and then the armor plates, so the chest plate there, and the shoulder plates, and the backpacks, and the knee pad, they're going to be a sort of blue-gray color. Um, I'm thinking something base like the fang, this sort of bluey-gray color, and then darken down with the wash. Um, I think that's going to be cool. And then there's going to be a red stripe on the shoulder pads. So the shoulder pads are kind of six paneled. Down the middle two panels is going to be a red stripe. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty striking. And I'm looking forward to it. So um, this is some airbrush work. And definitely made it way more efficient than hand painting all these guys. Great. And also allowed me to use this cool Air Force color. So that's pretty cool. Um, so we're going to keep working on these guys next probably next we're going to um, pick out the armor plates i think that we're finished the cloth first because the armor plate is on top i haven't decided yet but um yeah we're going to keep working on these guys and all right work begins on finishing my army for pnp uh Elysians are going together now so i decided on thunderhawk blue for the armor so it looks pretty good these dudes let me show you guys where you can See it, here we go. Looks pretty good on that gray. So the fabric is gonna be gray. And then the armor plates are gonna be this blue gray Thunderhawk. And then boots and stuff will be brown. So pretty cool. And the visors are gonna be like glowy blue. Pretty sweet. So I uh, managed to do 10 tonight. My hands are all cramped, so I'm gonna stop. Um, I've rebased these uh, rattlings a little bit so that they're consistent with the other rattlings. And I've sprayed the tempesters white so they're ready to go. Uh, I'm turning one sentinel into a heavy flamer sentinel, so I took the last cannon off and uh, that heavy flamer is just being spray bombed. I've put together another Primus, so that's just to guide me, and I need to get an Acolyte Icon Ward. My list has changed a little bit, and uh, so all things sort of starting to move forward for PMP. All right, it's taken a few days, um, but I've painted a nice solid Thunderhawk Blue on all the armor plates for these 30 Scions. I uh, had to take two coats, sometimes three on each piece, so it took a while. It's pretty, they're pretty small pieces, um, small models, and so it took a little bit of time, but it's been done. I think it's going to look pretty good. Um, so next will be to pick up some of the other details, and then washing time. But uh, that was a pretty big step accomplished, so I'm happy with that. Alright, after a bit of a hiatus due to... Busy life, uh, work has begun on Elysians again. Just doing the faces, so put some Bugman's Glow down. And highlight with some uh, shade, with some Reichland Flesh shade. So, looks pretty good. Try to concentrate the shade up at the, towards the um, underside of the goggles. Just to give it that bit of 
shading, I guess, under the goggles. Like that, so that they look kind of cool, like that. Looks pretty sweet. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's difficult to know what to do next. The, uh, and I shaded the skin so that I wouldn't have to mix shades when I do the rest of the model and non oil. So I just kind of finish the shading on the skin at this point, and I can continue to paint while I have the shade down on the skin because it's such so small amount, it's not going to pool and uh, just in terms of efficiency of time. So what I might do next is um, silver. So silver includes these um, wiring, the weapons, and uh, parts of the backpack. All right, we're back at it after about a week of absence. Uh, took me forever to paint all the silver on these guys, but it's done. The guns and the wiring and the uh, cables on the backpack. Uh, so, yeah, uh, daughter's been sick, so I've not had a lot of time to hobby at all. Not been a lot of time to do anything, including sleep. <laughs> so uh, it's been a bit slow, so we're gonna get moving on these guys again. I think the next step now will be to do the uh, visors. Maybe I'll do the visors right at the end. Maybe we should do the visors right at the end. Uh, so probably, I think, I'm at the stage where I can shade these bad boys and then highlights and the visors. And then some glow on the plasma, basing, and then done. I think that's the way to go now. Alright, so before shading, I decided to follow my inspiration, which was a picture on the internet. That's where I got this color scheme from. And the guy put a little red stripe on the right shoulder pad, which actually looks very good. Makes these guys look a little bit elite to have this red stripe there. Adds a bit of color to an otherwise pretty uh, bland color palette. Uh, so that's cool. So I put a red stripe on everybody. Here we go. So they look kind of like more elite troopers now. Uh, there's one guy over here who doesn't have a shoulder pad. Uh, I'm not sure why. I'm going to have to try and find one and uh, rectify that. And then the sergeant has the uh, Aquilas and stuff in gold on his shoulder pads. So... Okay, so all right, non-oil applied, and uh, they look pretty good. Of course, non-oil is liquid skill, so uh, now you can see all the pants and those little studded pads and uh, all the gun details and everything has come out and melded together into this nice kind of grayish color, so that's beautiful. They're looking good, so we're going to give that some time to dry and then carry on to the next stage. Oh, and I just could not find one shoulder pad. <laughs> it's really annoying. I'm not going to order just one shoulder pad, so... Oh, well. Alright, I did end up finding a pad, a commander's pad, so I'm going to put it on that guy. Just painting it blue with the red stripe there that's going to go on after I wash it. Uh, these guys have turned out pretty good. What I've done is I've put an extra non-oil wash just into the studded pad areas on the arm and the thigh. So I just wanted those that pattern to really stand out a little bit more. So I just went through each guy and put a little bit of no no into those padded areas. Didn't take very long and uh, so waiting for that to dry and we'll go on to highlights. Alrighty, we're about 40% uh, way through highlights here. I've highlighted all the guns with um, Stormhole Silver of course, so that's all done. I've uh, uh, dry brushed the boots with um, Administratum Grey, kind of lighten them up a little bit. And uh, I'm just, I need some new dry brushes before I can do the white. The dry brushes I have are too splayed and too fat. Um, and then now I'm just edging the armor. So just all the little armor plates, edging them in Fenrisian Grey, which is a nice color. Just edging up all those armor plates which is taking a while but uh, making progress looks pretty good then I'll highlight the face and then I'm going to dry brush the whites once again new dry brush and then I'm going to do the visors and the base and I'll be done these guys alright edge highlighting is done on these guys painstaking work going through 30 of them 
but uh, worthwhile because those shoulder, those padding, padding looks great. Really adds some depth to these guys who were otherwise pretty flat when I finished with the shading, which is how it always ends up. It always starts off pretty flat after base coats and shading and then the highlights and the dry brushing really brings it out. So these guys look great. Okay, we're gonna go on and do the faces and the visors. All right, the whites are done. Um, very, I had to buy a new dry brush. Yeah, let me show you this. So first, I got this dry brush from GW. I bought a new dry brush because my other dry brush was so wrecked. This is a GW dry brush. And literally, the bristles come off. Uh, it's hard to do this one-handed, but uh, I was just wiping it down and drying it off and putting it like this, and then like half the bristles came off. It's useless. Um, so anyway, uh, I just uh, went back to my... Uh, I got these... I got these... I can't remember where I got these. Oh, so somebody who sold me Necron stuff just threw in a whole bunch of these artisanal... Artisanal... Artists Loft acrylic brushes and I use them haven't actually used them yet one of them I used to clean my airbrush and this one I just found which is the kind of size air uh, dry brush I was looking for kind of a small size and uh, it's actually the bristles are thicker um, so they it actually survives the dry brushing process better than the GW ones and actually I used it all for my dry brushes so it actually looks pretty good uh, so I've been dry brushing these guys uh, just the whites, the pants, and uh, the arms, these pads, and uh, looks pretty good. See here, the the, the uh, sculpts are so nice that it very easily with a light dry brush just uh, picks out the gray and kind of brightens these guys up a little bit so they're not so dark, but still kind of white, gray, light gray sort of uh, color, which I think is really quite nice. It goes well with this sort of some the Thunderhawk blue base. I'm uh, really liking this color scheme. So you see this guy here. Yeah, that's cool. And then the the boots are kind of a darker gray with administratum gray dry brush. So they're kind of darker and then this sort of light gray white. And then the backpacks are matching. So I think it looks pretty good. Um, so really these guys are almost done. The next steps now will be to do the face, highlight the faces, and then do the visors last, and then the basic, and then they'll be done. All right, working on the visors. Uh, I chose red um, because it matches the stripe on the shoulder. I also tried green and orange. I didn't want to do yellow. I didn't want to do blue as that would be more samey samey. So. I wanted a high, like a punchy color, so I chose red, and it looks pretty good. Um, so what we're gonna do now is wait for all those to dry. I painted all 30 visors red, and then we're gonna highlight. Now I'm not sure how to highlight it, or just the edge highlight it, or to do like a line across it. So the inspiration for these guys' paint scheme comes from um, this. And so the question is, let's see if I can get it up for you guys. Draw like this line across it like that. Like as almost like there's information scrolling across the inside of the visor. It's pretty cool. It's hard to see because it's kind of bright, but... Yeah, so I'm wondering if I should do that with the highlight on these visors. But I guess we'll find out. Um, yeah, we'll keep going with that. All right, these guys are done. So the visor was finished off with a little, with a sort of yellow stripe across the middle. That's uh, it's uneven on purpose. It's supposed to be like representing information flashing on the inside of their visors. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know if it looks like that, but it looks pretty cool. And then I put a layer of art coat, which is still drying on it, just to make it look a little bit glassy. 
and otherwise these guys are done um super fun models very took me ages to paint them um it's so much detail such small models everything is so fine um and uh but i think they look awesome this little stripe on it that's one guy there here's the little sergeant dude He's got a face and his visor's up. He's got these epaulettes. And, uh, yeah, this guy looks du dope. Dope, dope, dope. I got some other dudes here. These guys look pretty sweet. All right, we'll just go on and do the bases. I'm not really sure how to do the bases. I was thinking, um, not too different from the Catachans, but I don't want it to be the same. So I was thinking more like deep striking into ruin sort of thing. So some rocks, and maybe a bit of grass. I don't know, I'm kind of uninspired on the base point of view. Um, we'll kind of see what I come up with. Maybe I'll leave it for a little bit, paint something else and come back to it. Uh, I started work on the three Tempester Primes. Uh, which are going to be the same sort of color scheme so that they mesh in nicely. These, of course, were my conver converted scions into Tempesta Primes. So I got those three of those guys there. I uh, still got to paint some Primaris Psychers. Uh, so my list for the tournament has changed significantly because the, the recent FAQ FAQ yesterday has basically eliminated the possibility of playing Gene Stealer and Guard if you want to use Guard. Regiment rules and stratagems. They made that illegal. So my Gene Stealer Guard list is gone. It's going to be replaced by uh, my Ravenwing Aggressor and Guard list. So I still have nine aggressors to paint. So I might go ahead and start doing that. Anyway, uh, it's been a long time waiting for these guys to get done. And uh, thanks very much for watching.